Yes. Yeah, and we're just stand by. Once I cut out, you'll be live. Once I cut out, you'll be live. Once I cut. All right. Party on, Ryan. Party on, Kyle. You know what time it is? It's Space City Chronicles time. That's right. Space City, City Chronicles. Chronicles. Public access. access TV show. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah. All right. I'm excited for the show today. Are you excited for the show? Very excited. Very excited. You know, I think we're going to have an emphasis on a very certain place. Oh, yeah? What place is that? A city that you may be familiar with. I'm not very familiar with. Oh, is it? Is it the city that never sleeps? No, it's not the city that never sleeps. Is it the sleeps. city that always sleeps? No, it's not the city that always sleeps. Is it the city that sometimes sleeps? No, it's actually the Windy City, Ryan. It's Chicago. So what you're telling me is that no one knows whether they sleep or not there. They um, don't. That's 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 a mystery I hope we get to uh, by the end of this episode. But the Windy City, Chicago. I think we should explore that. Chicago! Space City Chronicles! Public awesome access! Awesome show, TV, yeah! Never sleeps! Never sleeps, no. No, it doesn't. So there's a lot to talk about with Chicago, you know. Right? There's so many like references and and, and famous uh, and, famous quotes or and information, people, information and history and uh, people and places and things. Let's not forget about the Chicago things, like the Chicago style pizza. Right. The there's hot dogs. The hot dogs. The what? What makes a Chicago dog? Ketchup and mustard? Ooh. No? Oh no. Ooh. Is that bad? I think that's real bad. Oh no. My understanding is you never put ketchup on a hot dog. And I only like ketchup. You only like ketchup? On my hot dogs. Uh, all the way up until I was like 20, I only like ketchup on my hot dogs. And then you tried with more? And then I tried with more, yeah. So now I like if my go-to condiment combo is uh, ketchup and mustard. So I like them both. Okay. I like a little bit of the sweet and I like a little bit of the spicy. Now the ketchup is the sacrilege, right? Uh, that's the thing that you never put on your hot dog. Um, pre the president puts it on a steak, but mm. you shouldn't put it on a hot dog. I have no opinions about whether or not you should put it on a steak. As far as I'm concerned, put all the ketchup on steak you want. Cook, cook it as cook it as heavy as you want. You know that well done charred steak with ketchup. That's fine. But the ke the hot dog now that's that's a high cuisine thing. I know, you know people that are offended though by any type of sauce on steak. Mm. Like even a one that's like made for steak. It's a steak right. sauce. It's like it, that's like halfway between a barbecue sauce and ketchup. So are you saying though that people from Chicago might get offended if ketchup goes on? I a think so. I think there's a few the things that we're missing. Uh, folks at home, if you know what goes on a Chicago dog, call 713-807-1794 and let us know. That doesn't mean we'll try it. That just means oh, no. that we'll know what's on it. Because uh, this is a Chicago episode and uh, we want to get y'all involved because we don't know what's on a Chicago dog. No, we don't. Space City Chronicles, Chronicles Public Access TV Show. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, We're yeah, yeah. Back Party on, it. Ryan. Yeah, party on, Kyle. So we have. Uh, there's a lot of media from Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. Wayne's yeah. World, set in Chicago. Aurora, to be specific. Exactly. Just a suburb outside yeah. of Chicago. There's a. Uh, Oh, there's that show, Early Edition. You remember that show? I remember Early Edition. You know, the mm -hmm. one about the guy who gets tomorrow's newspaper today? Ooh. And it's brought to him by a cat? A cat delivers tomorrow's newspaper to him a day early? Oh, my goodness. That was huh? a heck of a show, that wasn't it? That was a heck it? of a show. Why <laughs> don't they have more TV plots like that? I feel like that's... That was something special. Early Edition. Kyle Chandler... Well, any cat that can bring a newspaper to someone's door is special in my Absolutely, opinion. absolutely. But uh, we have oh, a lot of famous talk show hosts. A lot of famous talk show hosts. Chicago, right? Oprah. Oprah. Don Jer Jer Donahue. Jer Donahue. Springer. Jerry Springer. Yeah, absolutely. A couple of those. We're gonna see a little bit of that action later to later today. 
uh, some of the talk show of his, throwing back to daytime. There's a lot of famous musicians mm -hmm, from right? Chicago. Absolutely. There's uh, there's uh, Kansas. And Chicago. The no, they're not from Chicago. Oh, okay. There's, so ba there's Boston. Nice. Boston. There's there's um, uh, that little old band from Texas. They're from Chicago. Okay. There's um, <laughs> what else we got? I know Chicago blues is very popular. Chicago blues, yeah. Muddy Waters was it, didn't he mm. make his yeah, uh, they, start? They, in they Chicago? made the bluesmen. They made their way up the, up the Delta. Mm -hmm. um, and John Lee Hooker, I think. Oh yeah. And then the Blues Brothers. Blues Brothers. BB King. BB King. Maybe not from Chicago. But they all played in Chicago. Exactly. They all career, played not, right? in Chicago. But there, there's musicians. There's also uh, sports. Sports. A lot sports, of great sports. Yeah. Uh, World Racquetball Champions 2016 from mm -hmm. Chicago. Yeah. And then nobody really cares about baseball anymore, but the no, Chicago Cubs won last year the World Series. They did. That's right. You know who didn't win the World Series? Who? The Yankees. No, no, the other Chicago team. Oh, the, the Sox. The White the Sox. The White Sox. They must have, yeah. If you know why yeah. Chicago has two MLB teams, give us a call at 713-807-1794. I'd really like an answer to that. I actually think I can give an answer to oh, that. Oh, really? I think the people on the south side of Chicago wanted a team that would represent them. Oh. And they got it in the White Sox. I see, I see. But it's, I don't... it's a diverse city with a large population, yeah. and you needed more representation through sports teams. Right. Gotcha. Right. Well, I think we should take a little bit of inspiration from that um, here in Houston. We could use... What, what, what's another sports team that we could use more of, you think? Um, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I went to a basketball game last night. Yeah. And the bottom section wasn't even filled in, and we were playing... LeBron James team, the Cavaliers. So, so I don't think we could use another basketball or team. Or maybe we could use absolutely another basketball team. So that way we could have even more seats available closer to the court. And cheaper tickets. That is a very good point, They Ryan. need to get people in there. Another team is going to drive down the ticket cost because there's more supply than demand. It's basic basketball economics, folks. And I know it's a, a, a single-player sport, sometimes doubles, but w what about a tennis team? Houston doesn't really have a tennis team, do they? A tennis team? No, no, Maybe they the, don't. The University of Houston might have a tennis team, but... Right. I think the city of Houston needs a tennis team to represent them. That's right. What should we call Houston's very first tennis team? The Rackets? <laughs> I think you're on to something there, Kyle. Okay, all right. I think you're on to something. All right. Houston Tennis, Racket Team. That's a good name. All right. Excellent. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm trying so, to think of some other sports teams, but you know, Ryan, I think Houston just has a little bit of everything. That's right. If you double up on too much, you know, they they might not be able to. Uh, there's saturation, then there's oversaturation. There's yeah. saturation, and then there's. So so that we so we got a lot more on the show planned, right? There's also. Uh, well, in celebration of the sports, we're going to be playing a game later called uh, Smell the White Sox. Ooh. That's going to be really fun. We've got, uh, we've got a couple of surprise guests on the show. And we've got musical guest Leslie. She's going to be playing some songs about Chicago and from Chicago. All right. uh, that's coming up soon. Very exciting. Uh, so hang tight, and we're going to get an awesome Chicago themed show. Chicago style show. Chicago style show, because this is exactly how they do it in Chicago. One more time. Space, Space City. Chronicles. Party time. Excellent. Hi. Um welcome welcome to welcome welcome to 
welcome to if you can't be famous then you should be infamous I'm your host I have two guests today who are who do who do similar things that I do which I cannot talk about on public access television but I would like to introduce them These are my guests. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hello. 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 I. That's that's a bit much. I just let's go ahead and. I I brought you a chair. I don't know if you. Uh, this is a chair for you. I, I, so that we can all we can all sit. I, tr I treasure this gift. I treasure your, uh, what I assume will be an everlasting and powerful friendship. Okay. I sense we might have something in common. So, this show is about people who may or may not have committed serial crimes of the murder variety. You may be known as a killer of a serial nature. Not like the podcast, but like in real life. Oh, that, I, th I think that's a problem because, uh, because I've devoted a lot of my time to putting the kibosh on uh, popular uh, episodic podcasts that explore the criminal justice system. Um, so, so basically, I try, to, uh, I, try, I try to get the enthusiasm right out there. So I, you, you really could say I'm a serial killer. Be, but only because I, I try to kill cereal because I don't want to hear about it anymore. Okay. Um, well, I have cereal every morning for breakfast, and Fruity Pebbles is my favorite. Is that good? And I kill that cereal I, every morning. I, I believe that there may have been a miscommunication hmm. with... I, I wore some inappropriate shoes for today's... Ooh. Uh, did you did you paint those yourself? Paint, yes, paint. Well, those are, those are really nice. Can we get a can we get a shot of those shoes? Uh, yeah. Look at that. I think we've got an artiste on our hands. Uh, y yes, paint, yes, yes. Paint, yeah. Um, according to these questions, how do you feel about your line of work? Well, oh, well, I mean, oh sorry. Go ahead. It's it's more of a necessity for me, you know. When I wake up, that's all I think about. And so, it's, killing that cereal is is just violently grabbing that cereal from inside of your cabinet, shake shaking it within an inch of its life by it's, the, it's bowl, the bowl with the milk, with the slurping. Okay, it all the way down. You know, I if you put it in such terms, I can get behind that. <coughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And giddy up. Yeah, and as you as you can hear, I've brought some of the uh, the sounds of my job with me. I work on a farm. I'm a business farmer. Mm. I my job at the farm is to make sure that uh, all of the animals are being financially respected. So, much like famous serial killer Edward Gein, you also live on a farm. This is true. I do live on the farm, yes. Have you made a lampshade out of a person? That's a good question. I'm going to take that as a no. Well, it depends on what you consider as a person, because... The skin, on, on the flesh, the bones, the innards, anything that comes from a person who was originally living and is now dead. Oh, That's I so understand what makes up a person. What I'm saying is, what do you define as a person? Because as a business farmer... As I said, I respect the financial needs of all of the animals, and as such, I do treat them and consider them as people. And yes, I have made a lampshade out of squirrels. Mm. And, and it's so very fuzzy, it doesn't spread the light well, but it is something that I've done. But it spreads the light, so illumination is what is required for a lamp, it sounds like. It's not it a great lamp, be... but it is a great squirrel skin quilt okay. spread around the lamp. Hmm. This is this has been disappointing. 
Mm. I thought that we would share tips and secrets on the best way to vivisect someone. Oh. Flay them open. And I thought we were just going to talk about, like, everybody's favorite cereal and, like... Golden and Grams. Like, oh, I've never had Golden Grams. Waffle Crisp. Wow, and I have not had... I've had Cookie Crisp. So... We're have learning. You, have you only eaten Cookie Crisp as a cereal? Actually, no. I've only eaten Fruity Pebbles But you've and heard, of, heard of Cookie Crisp. Okay. Well, it's been a long time. I had Cookie Crisp as a, as a child. I haven't seen it in a long time. I remember a long time ago that there was a burglar that might have been the mascot. Uh, it, he was... Um, Another reason that I bring up the Cookie Crisp is because the wolf was a was in fact one of, one of what I thought was one of us, but really is just more me. Um, well, we all like cereal, so you can still use he, us. He, right. He, you, this is uh, correct. He did indeed kill many bowls of cereal. He also may have murdered a child. May have. There's may, speculation. May have. There's no may proof. Have. These are all. This is all very substantial. Sub, mm, circumstantial. Circumstantial. That's the word I wanted to use. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm. I got you there, right? I helped get you there. You. You did. Well, it's it's been a pleasure. I. I. You know, let's just move our hands really close to each other, but okay. let's just not touch. I'm just so excited. Thank you yeah. for having us on. Uh, this. This is good. It feels good. Um. Uh, by the way, uh, there's a trail of dead bodies that I left on the way in in the hallway. Uh, they're, they're, they're just kind of scattered about. What do you want me to do with those? Is it um, is it the one trail that's right next to the pile of dead bodies? Because the pile is just mine. No, I'm, no, I'm, no. It's it goes like all the way to the bathroom. Can you move them into the pile? Yeah, absolutely. Just just go ahead. That's and... the general murder pile, right? Yeah. I oh think, yeah, yeah. I think that'll. Work. Hey, just, just hey, I didn't know you were into murder piles. I'm into murder piles too. I just really hate the podcast serial. I'm sorry I live with that. And surprise, I, I'm into that too. I love what murder piles. What? You guys, you guys, I've you guys, I've been putting on this act of being like weird when we could have just been normal people with murder piles. Yeah, together. murder is great. I mean, I don't know. I'm the killing serial podcast. Kill Look, killing rape. Let's break the cereal. We have a lot in common. Right. It, got, listen, it's okay. I just didn't. I, now I put myself out there like a weirdo, and no. like uh, I'm trying to oh, destroy the stigma of being like a but look, weird look, dude who murders people. And but you know, look, it's look, fine. Look, and we're look, all look, in. look. It's it's been a pleasure. I gotta run, but happy murdering. I'll clean up my murder piles, please. And I'll help. Thank you, you for having me on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen. I guess that's been, if I'm not famous, I'm infamous. I hope that's the name of the show. Um, our, I guess our, our next guest is um, a musician. Uh, he's playing music. Just, just cut to her, just cut to her now. Just cut to her now. Slept in parking lots. 
Thank you for coming. Very, very great to hear from your music. That didn't make any sense. How you doing? Pretty good. All right. So uh, for the folks at home, uh, this is my first music interview. Uh, usually Callie does the job, and she does a great job. Uh, John usually fills in for her. Uh, neither of them are able to be on this episode, so I'm taking over. My first interview. Apologize for the nerves. Um, so Leslie, tell me a little bit about uh, your history with the banjo. Um, I've played guitar most of my life, and my friend Ian, who actually makes guitars for a living now, he had a banjo that he wasn't using, and he's like, you know what, Leslie, you're always playing the guitar like this, like you need to play the banjo. So he just gave me his old banjo, so that's a free banjo I got from one of my best friends. And I've been trying to figure it out, listening to a lot of Sufjan and trying to learn how to play, but still got a ways to go. All right. So uh, we noticed you did. We ever used the uh, the finger picks, or is you mostly just fingertip style? Mostly playing? my nails. 
I've never played guitar with a pick, so it's hard to start using it for a banjo, but I'm trying to train myself. Sometimes when I play uh, like a steel string instrument like the banjo or a guitar, and I'm using those fingernails for strumming, it kind of hurts. Does that happen to you? No. Oh. Uh, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> I'm not sure. Mm, maybe get some lessons later. So what's your favorite banjo-related song? Do you, can you pick out like a number one? It depends on what kind of banjo moment you're going for. If you're going for a quiet, happy one or a fast-paced, fun one or so, classic banjo. Right. So what I'm hearing is that there's multiple banjo moments possible. And you can't shoehorn the instrument to just one style because it can express so much. It's true. It's not just a joke instrument. It's not just a joke instrument. But what are some joke instruments? The uh, mouth you, trumpet? Ma <laughs> <laughs> the mouth trumpet. So, for example... That's a joke? I wouldn't take it very seriously. No. I, I don't take it very seriously either. Um, kazoo. Uh, it's normally a joke instrument, yeah. I'm sure someone could do something meaningful with it, but... If you've heard anything meaningful come from a kazoo, please call 713-807-1794. Love to hear about it. Um, so, is there anything that you'd like to share with the audience uh, that, uh, that they may not know about related to the music uh, or anything else? Um, maybe that I didn't have a lot of time to <laughs> prepare the songs for practice. It was kind of a spur of the moment. Hey, Leslie, grab your banjo and let's go play some songs. Mm -hmm. My guitar, I have a very beautiful Taylor guitar that Ryan actually helped me pick out, and it's in the shop because it's, I don't know what's happening to it, but it's warping, and so my guitar is in the shop, and all I have is my handy banjo, so. The handy banjos. Copyright Ryan. Don't steal that band name. The Handy Banjos. That's mine. You, you can share it if you want to. I don't play banjo, but I kind of want to hang on to it because it's got a nice ring to it. I think it'd be more successful if there weren't any banjos in the band. I think so, too. I wasn't planning on I wasn't planning on playing the banjo, just being called the Handy Banjos. It'd, it'd be nice because our, our, our band t-shirts could have, like, stencils of all, of all the band members' hands on it. The Handy Banjos. <laughs> yeah, uh, I understand that uh, you actually have a lot of experience repairing other instruments, uh, specifically the violin. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, I don't have any musical training, but I like taking things apart and putting them back together. So after Katrina, the Tipitinas Foundation in New Orleans donated a bunch of violins to schools to try to help them bring back the music program, but there weren't any people who knew what to do with a stringed instrument. New Orleans is mostly a brass instrument city, so I volunteered my time while I was in college repairing violins, and it was hard at first, but it got to be really fun towards the end of it. So. Mm -hmm. It's really... Uh... It, it really is, especially like aligning the bridge just right, tightening up the strings. It's very, it's a very, um, I don't know, it's a very handy, handy banjo instrument. I don't, I don't know how to put those words together, but it's good. So, so we're hearing some music right now. Um, oh, that was a, that was a bad joke cue. Hey, thanks, Ed. <laughs> Oh, that's that's a very p polite piano there. Um, it's nice to be able to communicate like that. Um, what are some other areas of of your expertise? Um, I have a master's of science, so I know a lot about science. Um, I studied more sustainable development and ecology, but I love all kinds of science. Fantastic. Uh, do you have any, any last words for the, uh, for the audience at home uh, before you, we send you back to the musician corner? Aren't I supposed to talk about a sandwich or something? 
Oh, right. So, uh, Leslie would like me to ask her the Cali question, the infamous, what sandwich do you think about while you're in the shower? See, knowing that I was going to be on the show this morning, I thought about the sandwich. And I am growing tomatoes on my porch right now, and I'm also trying out being vegan for Lent. So the sandwich I've been thinking about is using my homegrown tomatoes to make a fried green tomato po' boy with vegan remoulade sauce. Um, and I'm really excited for the next month for when my tomatoes start to bloom. That sounds absolutely delightful. Leslie, thank you for being on. I'm looking forward to your next performance. Spoiler alert, I'll be playing a little fiddle on it too. Um, thank you very much, and uh, folks, we'll see you in just a few minutes after our bumper. We uh, cut the bumper, so there's no life. have uh, no roots in Texas whatsoever. I'm, the f I'm a first generation Texan. Neither one of my parents is from here. I, uh, not, I don't understand any of the local traditions. I am a first generation Texan who is completely mystified by this state. My roots actually lie in the windy city itself, Chicago! Oh, anyway. Cow. Exactly. What? It's it's not a cow, it's a bull. Okay. It's a basketball team. Yeah. Ye yeah. I I try to muster some enthusiasm. Anyway, as you can see, I'm a I'm a, little, I'm a little tired, so I won't be doing a lot this week. But we thought that because Chicago's a city with so much history, so much interesting and rich history, we needed to do something with that. And Chicago, of course, is the birthplace of modern improv. Everyone knows Second City, Improv Olympic, Del Close. These are names that I've just thrown out, and I'm assuming you know something about them. If you don't know anything about them, call in at 713-807-1794, and I'll give you a little mini lecture from the details that I remember. Or you could just sit back and watch this bit and be patient at home! Anyway, without further ado, here is an improvised history of Chicago. Now, I won't be doing this all by myself. I've got some players here. And we also have a resident Chicago expert, a.k.a. an RCE, a genuine RCE. It, um, it, it, it could, how, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Hi, how you doing? Hi, how you doing? That was good. Okay, so we're about, what are we, we're going to, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that well, improv first, thing, the yeah, second city thing. First, like, first we need a, we need a, a recommendation for a good Italian beef. Uh, 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 uh Gabagoolies, uh, you all know the most uh, hottest Italian beef. Gabagoolies? grabbed by the ghoulies on Xbox. You all know this one. It's oh the gosh. one. It's the hottest beef. The all right, hottest well, hold beef. Hold on. Where are we going to get, like, 
That, where can we get a good kielbasa sausage? You go, you go to my mother's house, she'll cook up the best kielbasa. She's a mob wife. She understands. Oh, wow. She understands the completely. Polish mafia, that's scary. Anyway, so the, the first scene I'd like to set here is uh, the founding of Chicago. I feel let's start at the beginning. Chicago was founded by uh, a man named, named Ago and his friend Sha. And they got together on the banks of the of the Chicago River. Oh, I thought you were going to say like the Bridge of River Kwai or like Dr. Chicago. Like the movie. I know we've all Chicago we're... was founded before movies. <sighs> anyway, Shy and Kago came together at the Chicago River and they decided to found a city. So I, I think that's what we're going to look at now. Oh, let me get down so everyone can see. Uh, Shy, this is perfect. Kago, this is almost perfect. I know what you're thinking. It just needs a name. It does need a name, but also, I was more thinking that you should turn your leg over here so that we can both be majestically looking off in the same direction. Because we're, we're, we're getting off on, literally on the wrong foot here. Mm, mm. All right, that, that's better, that's better. All right, Kago, what you thinking? Um, I'm thinking, you know, we, we start with streets, and then eventually maybe build some rails, and and one day there might be buildings tall enough that we ride to the top in. <laughs> that's that's pretty big, but I think we need to think even bigger. This. Big picture stuff, you know, okay. not just not just uh, buildings that you ride to the top of, but like, what do we call this whole thing that we're on right now? Like, they settled on the the first name they settled on was Planet Earth, which was horrible. I have to say, hold on, your your history is very inaccurate. Okay, Shy and Kago both met uh, on the banks of the river in the in the Lake District. Yes, that's both very true. We all are aware of we this. We all learned, we all learned in this school. in history. You are very. Uh, this is uh, corrective history at its finest. You are forgetting their death battle that they both had because they both wanted to name the city two different things. Uh, Shy well, I... wanted to call it Shy Town, and Kago wanted to call it Kagakopia. Well, first of all, it's Cogacopia. I, I do not want to be I do not want to be accused of rewriting history. This is a public access show with a family audience. I didn't want to include such graphic violence, but yes, Shy and Cago did battle to the death with <laughs> neither one winning. Well, I mean, they're both they're both brothers from the same mother, and they're evenly strong in their match. Oh, they had a draw. Oh, I, I mean, in this part, of course, they don't tell you about this. Uh, Shy, of course, the most sneaky of the brothers. Well, actually, see, this is where your history is wrong because Shy was okay. poisoned by Kano. <laughs> my history, my history is wrong. Oh, okay, okay. You know, I, let, I would I would Look, accept that from a first generation Texan who's no longer living in the Windy City like I. I, I have no home. You don't even know what a deep dish pizza is. First of all, not if there's anyone from Chicago. No one eats that crap. It's, it's a pizza. PSA: like a pie. Deep dish pizzas are disgusting. Do not eat them. Do not ask for them. Do not order them. Do not pay for them. Do not go inside of a Lou Malnati's. You will come back with a deep sadness that will never erode. Sir, you have offended me for the last time. Everyone from Chicago is totally offended that they're gross food. Anyway, I, I'm offended I'm that our food is being called well, gross. So, speaking of food, let's talk about the foundational, the foundation of the very first Chicago deep dish pizza. Yes, that's right. It started with a very solid white crust. A solid you, white crust. You emphasized white there. Yes, it because it's it's very important that you understand. Well, you can't have a, a brown seasoned crust in Whoa. Chicago. No. it uh, You will start out with a white even crust and then you add sauce to it. It's built like building a pie. <laughs> and apple pie is American and you don't see any, uh, you'd only see whiteness on apple pies. You, you serve it with vanilla ice cream. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, let's go see how that played out. Play first. That's not playing out. I thought we were gonna get back in position. And that was how a Chicago deep dish was invented. <laughs>
we, we'll we'll let it go. I, uh, I, you know, I think we should. I think we must have we must have read different textbooks in high school. I I do not know where you're getting this. This is exactly what I remember from school. And okay. Like all whenever I, whenever I would visit my grandmother, this is the story she would tell me. So let me ask you: Did your grandmother ever tell you the story about uh, Chicago house music? She alluded to it, but she also said that it was not really her thing. She's more of a more of a, a hardcore techno freak, but that didn't. I mean, she didn't. She didn't really know that until later in life. I also uh, remember Grandma Rossenfass was enjoying those hot beats in Berlin. That's that's fine. Grammy was, Grammy did tear it up at Bergheim. Yeah, I, I that's totally little, admit it. Now nah, I understand. She, yeah. Now uh, hold on. Now there's this is an important thing. You know, back when uh, Shy and Kago were first establishing the city uh, and they were deciding on where they needed to live. You know, we obviously went through the buildings. We went through the system of elevation. Uh, but you know they were also trying to uh, build a house, build a home for themselves. Mm -hmm. And in the natural rhythm of building a house, all of a sudden, Shy found out that he could start making 808 samplers out of uh, his lumber equipment. Let's see how that played out. Play for us. <coughs> wait, wait, Shy, what are you doing there? We're, we're supposed to be building the house. Uh, I thought we were going to get some sounds going and maybe dance a little bit. Uh, get some, get some house music. Boom, 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 boom. And and you see, this is this is an accurate depiction right now. Right now, they are going straight out of the history books to show you this stuff. Notice, notice both of their innate senses of rhythm. For those who are interested in making beats. This is how you make house music. Ooh, that's good house. This is a very that's some really smooth house. It's a strong house. Strong house, strong foundations. Foundations of a family. I have this. I have this single. This is a very good recreation recreation of that. Mm, yes. Um, we gotta come. Unfortunately, we have to come. Gotta wrap wrap up this little history. But I, we can't neglect. We cannot neglect my personal favorite part of Chicago, and that's got to be the baseball. You, you got to go to a game at Wrigley. You got to go to a game at Go Sox! Go Sox! Go Sox! Go Sox! I see. Go Sox! All right. Go Sox! Anyway, the Sox, it's it's not Sox, it's Sox. The, that's, Sox is Boston. Sox is Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Got to have that high, that, that short A. The accent is like the same accent. It's the same exact city. So I understand that. They both like literally but like the same thing. my personal favorite baseball moment in Chicago was the moment when a very racist and homophobic owner of the White Sox decided to have a disco suck demolition night where he invited all their fans to bring in their disco albums, throw them in the field, and set them on fire. And what ended up happening was a full scale riot that ruined the White Sox season forever. Hey, John, is that. How disco died? Uh, disco never died, Kyle. But yes, that is how disco uh, died. I thought it died another way. Go sax! <laughs> and that, my friends, is the history of Chicago, I, city of my father's I'm, birth. I'm done here. This has been a mockery of everything I've seen. Second before. city, only to Houston in my heart. But certainly a place I have always, I've always loved. Uh, later, I'll be reading from one of its poet laureates. But uh, I believe we have a second special performance from Leslie Lucas. Please, 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 sit down, enjoy, take it away.
plenty Coffers full We're starting all over Write you a story But it loses its thread All of my witnesses Keep turning up Keep turning up dead Ain't you a picture City of, city of light Come back to Chicago Speaking of the socks, this next bit involves some literal white socks and uh, how they smell. Now, we have to make this game very quick, so I ask that all of our contestants come on screen now. Come on screen. If you're going to play a game where you smell a white sock, please hurry, hurry, hurry. And uh, while we're doing this, uh, actually, well, before we play the game, why don't we do this a little order? Let's draw from the hat first. Well, Ryan, did you need to scent the socks? No, those are pre-scented. These are pre-scented? Yes. Oh, we can just play the game then? Yes. All right, so the rules of the game are simple. You smell the sock, you tell me what you think it is. Ryan knows the answers? No. No one knows the answers to these socks. Ed sent these socks. I have socks that I can scent now. Oh, well, let's, let's open the bag and see what our, our contestants think. All right. Uh, Raul, there you go. So no blindfolds should, necessary. Should we? None necessary. We're using your olfactory glands, and if you actually blindfolded yourself, you'd be giving yourself an unfair advantage. Oh, 
Interesting. Yeah. You wanna, you wanna, you Go ahead and take a whiff right here. Just uh. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. Well, I don't know what that is. It's it's citrusy for sure. But uh, oh, we got plenty of time. Let's just, let's, this is this is this is the stuff that was in a Glade canister. Yeah, definitely Glade. Can we get a confirmation on that? Is that a Glade scent in the sock? Confirm. 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 I mean, I my my. Sorry, nose. which sock was that? The the baggy socks. Please tell me that was Glade. Glade is not close enough. Uh, not close. Okay. Is it? What do you mean not close enough? Do you want well, more exact? The Glade scented candles cover a wide. Uh, you want array the specific. You want the specific aroma is what you're saying. Pretty much. Okay, that's fair. Okay, so Glade, but Glade is close. It's just uh, not. Glade exactly. is also not sponsoring the show. No, no, they're, no, they're really not. We are not fans of Glade. We absolutely insist that you not go out and purchase their product. My what? man, Ed, is this rosemary? That's correct. What? Hey! High five, high five! That's awesome! Nicely done. Rosemary. I think you win. I, I'm, I, All right, I'm well, gonna go with... Here, here is... Ryan has gone through the trouble of, of scenting another sock. Mm. And we do have one more. I did... I was... Uh, I, I do have one more performance I myself would like to get to. I'd like to read... Uh, but let's do this and we got to draw from the hat. So Ryan, you presented that sock. Here is a white sock for you to smell. For me personally? Yes, indeed. And you know what the smell is. I do indeed. So if I guess, you can confirm. I can indeed confirm that you've correctly smelled the white sock. Get Really get in there, John. Hold on. Let me get it into my mouth too. Make sure I get all of it. That's some advanced smelling technique there. Getting it into your I mouth. Couldn't, I couldn't honestly. I can't smell anything. Like, uh, maybe I couldn't. I have really bad olfactory, so I can't. Really anything from you, Kyle? <laughs> Any smells? No idea. Interesting scents in that sock. I don't know. My nose must be all stopped up. I don't know. Is it? Well, good news. You're a local Texas store band plastic bags do uh, such a great job of sealing in the scent should we open that up it bag? doesn't even work. Well, the scent creating thing is sticks to the sides of the bag such that I really can't get it out. Well, so we'll consider that sock scent a failure, but I've got more scents in store for you. the silver lining, the generic band plastic bag that was in the sock, good job! We're gonna review plastic bags next week. Let's move on to the next one. Let's move on to the next the next one, and then we got to do the hat. Try this one, John. I don't. I, I can't. I can't figure it out. Oh, this was the rosemary. Rosemary. Yeah, that was Ed's rosemary. Gotcha. That was yeah. quick. All three were in the same. <laughs> All right. Have and I got a new two sock? others in the in the plastic bag sock that are different? Oh well, then I don't know. I don't know either. Mm. A fresh scent just for you. Is that orange? It is not orange. What? You have incorrectly scented that sock. No, you correctly scented it. I incorrectly guessed. Kyle, can you guess the scent of this sock? Orange slices. No. No. He I... said orange. You said orange slices. Both of you are wrong. <laughs> I. You have somehow missed the scent of a good old-fashioned lime. That is a lime sock that you are smelling. Okay. Well, so I guess eat more tacos. I eat tacos three or four times a week, and I have lime every day. So perhaps you've become blind to the lime. Lime blind. Sometimes the socks also smell like laundry. Yeah, I mean, it, that compared... It, it, I, my first guess was orange, because I was thinking about an orange. And I didn't even really care what John said. I was just going by what it smelled like to me. Yeah, he really was orange slices. He was he was playing the game. There it is. And it's the lime. There's the They're lime. both citrus fruits. I they should have said citrus. maybe citrus fruit, they but that wouldn't have gotten you any credit because it's the we for specificity. There we always are going try. for specificity. So let me take a whiff of one of the We were wrong socks. together. Mm -hmm. Wrong. I'm smelling together. the sock. Uh, here we go. Ooh, there's something in there. I don't want to look at it. I'm just going to smell it. Can I sing, ooh, that smell? Mm. Ooh, that's a... That's smell a, the tip. 
I am. I'm. I'm very much smelling the tip. Sniff the tip. Ooh, Ooh, that's get your a, nose all over the tip. Put that's the tip a very. In your mouth. Uh, that's a very odorous. Scent. I think insertion of the tip is a bad idea. Jim. I want to say, ooh, 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 that's, um... Can I smell? That's lemon oil. Say, say that again? Is it is it scented with lemon oil? No. It, okay. Oof. I incorrectly scented that sock. Dang. Sniff the tip. I cheated, I know what it is, but I'm not going to say. Hmm. Yeah, I, 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 it's pretty strong, actually. It's Pledge. Uh, incorrect. That's, that's great. Well, uh, can I say yeah. what it is? Yeah, go for it. It's Nutmeg. Nutmeg? Oh, no. What? I was going to say, Nutmeg smells a whole lot like Pledge. Yes, it, I thought always, damn, gr Grandma! There's no doubt I get there. I'm sorry. She told me the wrong everything. Well, then I guess my I, I did cheat and I got it wrong. <laughs> you cheated. There should be one last uh, sock in there. Well, I'm gonna. You know what? There, I, there is not. There's... I'm I'm gonna go get ready for my performance. Y'all do the sock. Y'all, since you were so great this week, I want you both hold hands while you while you draw topics. But yes. I've, I've got to get ready Kyle, for my performance. I'm going to draw from the hat. I want you to smell this last sock of mine. I think you're going to enjoy it. All right. Before you do, party on, Ryan. Party on, Kyle. This has been a very Chicago episode of Space City Chronicles. What have you got, Kyle? It smells like a vegetable. It is a vegetable. But we're going for specificity. We're going for specificity. And it's not a pickle, it's a cucumber. It is a cuke! Woo! You nuked the cuke, Kyle. And I think that earns you a drawing from the hat. You draw one, I draw one. Okay. And we put them together for next week's episode theme. Next week on Space City Chronicles, Uber for dogs, we met on Craigslist. <laughs> Perfect. That sounds like a great show. <laughs> Uber for dogs. We, we met, met on, on Craigslist. Craigslist. Next week on Space City Chronicles. Okay. Tune in. Okay, I have to say this now. We have to nix the Uber part. We like the concept we can keep, but we cannot say the word Uber the whole time. Right, share for dogs. dogs. We met, met on, on Craigslist. A, uh, a Craigslist I'm fine Publix. with. Publix, okay, fine. Craigslist is, I, right. well, is it Craigslist a company? It doesn't make any money. No. No, no it's a thing. Right. It's a forum. Ride share for dogs, we met on Craigslist. So without further ado. Without further ado. Go from the pew pew. A pew pew. We've got a, pew, pew. a final performance from John. That closes out our Windy City episode of Space City Chronicles. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to the cast and crew for making all of this happen. There's so many more people not on camera tonight without whom this would have been an even more complete disaster. Hey, Ryan, let's give them a swing. Maybe a double swing. Double swing? Swing, swing. And now, John. Okay, serious. Now, as many of you know, Chicago had has had a long and illustrious history of both musicians, poets, and writers. And I found probably probably the greatest of all three. It's called Rock and Roll McDonald's, and it's by Wesley Willis. Do do McDonald's is the place to rock. Do do do. It is a restaurant where people buy food to eat. Do do do. It is a good place to listen to the music. People flock here to get down to the rock music. Rock and roll McDonald's. Rock and roll McDonald's. Rock and roll McDonald's. Rock and roll McDonald's. Do 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 do. McDonald's will make you fat. They serve Big Macs. They serve quarter pounders. They will put pounds on you. Boo, boo, boo. Rock and roll McDonald's. Rock and roll McDonald's. Rock and roll McDonald's. Rock and roll McDonald's. Do, 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 do. McDonald's hamburgers are the worst. They are 
are worse than Burger King. A Big Mac has 26 grams of fat. A quarter pounder has 28 grams of fat. Do, 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 do. Rock and roll McDonald's. Rock and roll McDonald's. Rock and roll McDonald's. Rock and roll McDonald's. Rock over London. Rock on Chicago. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Uh, great Rock show. I think, yeah. I think every episode should end with Chuck opening the door and saying, it's over. It's over. <laughs> it's over. It's over. That's the show. The next one should be real fucking weird. What's up? Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> whatever. I think that that is a specific, there's a specificity to that. Specificity? That we're going to have to. Roof. Roof, roof. What about a dog? A man who goes on a, a, a dog spree and then all the same things that he does, all the same things that the Uber CEO does, but he's a dog. So he like gets caught on camera being berated by one of his drivers, but it's just a dog getting yelled at. Just, I mean, I thought I heard. This is one of the things. I never could. Candy cane.